Hello YouTube world and thank you for joining me for this awesome little tutorial on an introduction to Maya. Now this particular tutorial is just about getting used to the interface, finding your way around some simple modeling tips, some simple rigging adjustments and making some animation that works. It's a fun little tutorial but it's very introductory so that anyone can do it. You should be able to find a link in the description below to the file that I use plus a tutorial step by step so you can follow along at your own pace at any time that you want. All right, let's get into it and make this awesome little carousel. Normally you'll start off with your windows looking something like this, but to optimize real estate or optimize screen view for this, I'm just gonna close down a few things. I'm gonna get rid of a couple of the things which I'm probably not gonna use. So by starting off, let's first open the file that we've got to start with. So just file, I'm gonna hit recent because I've used it a few times, there it is. So let's just have a look at what we have in here to start off with. We can use our Alt key and middle mouse button to rotate around, or left mouse button to rotate around, right mouse button to float back and forwards, left mouse button to zoom in and out. Now, if I get that wrong, that's because I'm using a tablet, I've set it up, so it's just Alt and those three mouse buttons to help you navigate around, get used to that. Um, the other thing which you probably always want to find out is just the hotkey F will focus on whatever you've got selected. So you select something, hit F, it'll focus it. But how about if you can't see anything? Well, so when you lose anything, open up your outliner and you can just select what it, some part of it, hit F, and it'll bring it back into focus. So what we've got in here at the moment is a couple of bits of geo and a couple of controls. This is just a starting point. So what we're gonna do is just have a look at, in the outliner, everything that's in here. We've got a base control. If we hit the plus sign, you'll see that there's also a horse control one, horse control two, a top, and a piece. I've also got a bottom and a horsey. So there's six, seven things within our scene, seven bits of uh, seven pits of geo. So now with it expanded, the things we're going to do is first off, we're just going to select piece one. Piece one the, of our carousel looks just like that. It's the main part of a carousel, but we're going to use a tool which is called duplicate special. So if we go to our uh, edit and find our edit menu down to duplicate special or control shift D because we want the option box. So and that'll bring up our option box for this. Now, the, now let's actually, for me, I'm gonna reset it so you can see all the changes I do. So this will be the way it opens up to start off with. So we're gonna leave the copy type the same and we're gonna leave the group under the same. But what we're gonna to wanna to do is in our rotate Y in the middle here, we're gonna make that 45 degrees. So just type in 45, and we're gonna make seven different ones of these. So if you want the maths behind that, it is, so if you break up a circle in 45 degree angles, you need eight pieces to make it up. So that's where we've already got one, so we need another seven, and we need to rotate them at 45 degrees all the time. And when we hit apply, all of a sudden, we've now got a full circle made. So this is something that's really important when you're thinking about modeling uh, assets. It's can you model it without actually having to model everything. You might be able to just do a whole heap of pieces like this and make a full circle of something of a complex shape. So now that we've got that, we also need to do the horsey as well. So let's just go over to our outliner over here, select the horsey, and then also hit apply. And if you look at that, it's actually created horses all the way around the outside of our carousel. Another seven of them. So eight horses all up to match the eight pieces. So that's pretty cool. And that's duplicate special. We can now, now that we've done all the modeling we're actually gonna do, we can get rid of that Focus on that. And now we're gonna start organizing our outliner because now that we've created that, all those pieces are just all over the place. So what we need to do 
is the all our horses are not controlled by anything at the moment. We can see if we grab the base uh, and just rotate that, you can see that our carousel moves around, but our horses do not. So let's make it so our horses go with our control rig. So I'm gonna start off selecting all the odd number horses. So I'm using a uh, control button and left click to select every second one. And then I'm gonna middle mouse drag these guys from there up to horse control one. What it's done, it's now organized it so that underneath the control is all of those horses. And do that with all these ones as well, except I'm gonna use shift to select everything because they're all in a list now. And I'm gonna middle, uh, middle mouse them up to horse control two. You can see that I now have four horses underneath one control, four horses underneath another control. I can collapse that down. Now if I grab my root control, rotate it around, everything spins around together which is what we want. Beautiful. So now that we have our geometry set up into our groups or under our controls, we can now go about animating these. So for a simple animation, let's also bring up our graph editor, windows, animation editors, graph editor. This is gonna be my friend for the next 10 minutes. Oh, this is gonna be my friend for animating. So I'm gonna select my base control, and first thing I'm gonna do with my base control is select Y, and at frame one, because we can drag it back and forwards along our timeline down here, at frame one, and I wanna right click and key selected. The next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is go all the way up to the end at frame 50. Now if we're working at 25 frames a second, 50 frames is two seconds. So we're gonna have two seconds for this to go around. Now mathematically, this is really, really easy. We'd want our carousel to turn a full circle, which we can just type in up here, 360 degrees. Now the thing with a 360 degree circle, if you actually put in 360 degrees, it's gonna be the same on the first frame as it is at the last frame. So they're gonna be at exactly the same spot. That's a minor thing for this particular demonstration, but it's something to consider. Just hit, I'm just gonna hit F on here. Now this particular curve shows that we've got something going slower, then it speeds up and then it slows down. For a carousel that we're gonna to wanna to go round and round at a constant speed all the time, that particular curve is not going to work. So what we're going to do is drag across the middle of that curve. It selects both ends. So I'm just gonna hit this button here, which is the linear tangents button. And you can see that the, the graph representation now just goes from being a straight line between those two points, which is good. But I'm also going to want, to want this to go endlessly forever and ever. So I'm just going to cheat for that as well. And I'm going to go curve post infinity cycle. So it's just, if you go to your view and make sure that infinity is turned on, you'll see now that that particular curve repeats over and over and over and over again which is good, means that I can expand out my timeline, say 250, and you'll see that carousel keeps going around, and around, and around, and around. So let's just make sure that that looks all right. Do you know what? That carousel is spinning incredibly fast. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my graph editor and focus up on my keyframes. I'm gonna change this one to be, instead of stats, so this 50 is what frame number it's at. So I'm gonna change that frame number from 50 to 100 to slow it down. Uh, 
and now it goes a lot slower. That looks at a much better speed. The other thing that happens in a carousel is these horses need to go up and down. So all the way back to frame one, I'm going to just expand this out and select horse control one. And from horse control one, I'm just going to put a keyframe here at zero on these. And I'm going to go out to frame 100 and put a keyframe on that again. And I'm then going to go to frame 50 right in the middle. And I'm going to change this to seven just because I know seven works. You can just grab it here and with use your mouse button to go up and down until you find a good comfy spot to where you think they'd rise up to. I just like seven as a number for them to go. Now what that would have created in our graph editor is this little whoopee thing, which is fine, it's good, but we're going to also want this to then curve post infinity cycle so that we get that uh, happening continuously. Now we're gonna do the same, we're gonna do a similar thing with horse control seven, but at horse control seven, we're gonna do it opposite. So at frame 100, we're gonna want that to be seven, and we're gonna key that there. And then down on frame one, we're gonna key it at seven, but frame 50, we want that to be zero. Let's have a look at our graph editor and see what that's done. There we go, it goes opposite, great. So let's put that in there, curve post infinity cycle. You see our curves now continuing. All right, let's go back all the way back to the start, select nothing so we've got nothing selected, hit play, And I've got some weird things happening. Because the green one is not moving until that. Boom, 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 boom. Well, that's no good. Let's fix that. Go back to our graph editor. Because uh, this is happening at frame 117. It's no good. Put that back to frame one. That one to frame 50. And this to frame 100. There we go. And that should look a little bit better now. Back to the start. So, so far we've made all the geometry for this. We've made all our horses multiply and we've animated it to go round and round and up and down. So far it looks pretty good. Let's just hide our controls, have a look at the polygons, just so the geo, we get to look at what the geo does. All right, next thing I wanna do is add some color to this thing. From this button here on the status line, or since we've got it, since I've got it hidden, you can go to Windows, Materials, Hypershade. And that opens up this window. So from this window, we can start making some colors. I've got my base shader color, which I dare say on any particular merry-go-round or carousel, I think that would probably, I'd, I'm just gonna hit the color, color button click and I'm going to make that a brownie color. So color one, I'm going to choose a very bright color for that. I'm just going to go for red. And then for color number two, I might go for yellow. Color number three, let's go for uh, purple. There we go. And color number four, I'm going to choose another bright color. Let's go for, I've already got yellow. Let's go for a green. There we go, bright green, cool. Horsey number one, 
For horsey number one, I am going to choose, make this one go white. And then horsey number two, I'm gonna choose, let me go, I haven't done a blue yet, so let's go for a bright blue. All right. Then I'm gonna also choose some colors for my lights. Let's go to the lights. So with the color for my lights, I'm gonna choose a really bright color again. I'm gonna go back to red, but I'm also wanting to have my lights flash on and off like they do in a carousel. So with that, I am going to go over here in my controls panel, my channel box, and I'm gonna select color one, two, three, and I'm gonna go key selected on frame one. Then I'm gonna to go to frame 50 and I'm gonna key selected. Then I'm gonna to go to frame 25, specifically 25, so I'm just gonna type it in. Go to frame 25 and you see that it pops over there, so you can type it down here. And I'm gonna change my color from red to yellow. And I'm gonna key that to make sure that my key colors are there. So now that I've keyed that, uh, for that particular color, I'm gonna go back to my graph editor. And you can see that I've got in selected, I've got my lights material and I've got an R, G and a B channel. You see that these are doing what I want before, which is nice and smooth, which is not what I want for my lights. I want them to be stepped keys, which we can check just by hitting here. So it's gone and stepped my keys so that they'll now go back and forth. And I wanna do the same thing I did before as well and select all of them and go curves, post infinity, cycle. That will cause them to flicker on and off. So I'm gonna to wanna to do the opposite for light too. So go back to frame one, I'm gonna choose yellow and I'm gonna key selected and I'm gonna to go to frame 50 key selected, and then I'm gonna go frame 25, again by using my numbers, 25, and I'm gonna choose red, and key selected. Beautiful, back to my graph editor. I'm gonna make, select all of them, just with dragging around the whole lot, and step key, and while I've got them selected, post infinity, cycle. So now, after all of that, we're just gonna close down the material editor. Oh, and look at that, we've got some bright, happy colors on our carousel. What's the most fun thing to do with this now is to put that back to frame one, press play, and watch everything go. You can see that our lights are changing colors. They're changing from yellow to red. Our little horses are going up and down and everything is going round and round like a carousel. So how was that? Hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you all very much for joining me for this little tutorial. I hope you've got something out of it. Please send links to any of your carousels that you do down in the comments below. And until the next time, I'm gonna say bye bye. Thank you.